So when I get people in the tutoring room talking about, what's your musical background? I, I tell them some about mine. Mine is, I grew up in a church where we sang for a part harmony. It's the southern gospel tradition. I don't know if they do that in the north because I'm not a northern person. I'm a southern person. So I grew up in a church where we sang for a part harmony. That wasn't really something that I had an option. It was just what everybody did. I thought that all churches did that, but as I've grown up and visited other congregations, that is not the case. Everybody has their own way of doing things. A lot of the churches we have a hymnal, um, and we sing four-part harmony. I, I'm not here to have a discussion on whether um, it's okay to have instruments in the church. That's that's not my goal here. I don't want to have that discussion because really I don't see why it needs to be argued. It has nothing to do with my salvation. I don't really care. Um, but what we do is we sing the four-part harmony. We don't train for years and years teaching ourselves how to read music. We're kind of born into it. For instance, for me, I've been singing two-part harmony since I was two, without knowing it. That's just what everybody else was singing. I would sing whatever part the person nearest to me was. That's why today I have a really good ear for hearing music and hearing the different melodies, harmonies, the different parts. The methods used in the Southern Gospel tradition is this thing called shape notes. Um, Basically, if you know shape notes and solfege, you can sing practically anything. A lot of people view it as a crutch, but I say to those people, I will beat you with a crutch. I think it's super cool and very useful. I've had a lot of discussions with musicians um, explaining what the shape notes are. Uh, have you heard of shape notes? I'm going to explain it to you. Basically, these old hymnals... This one's from the 50s, this one's from the 40s. Um, and new ones, like this one's pretty recent and huge. Supplements, hymnal, now this is probably everybody recognizes the sacred selections. Like, uh, 1960, I think is when this one came out. The sacred selections, um, full of music like this. Basically, um, if you grew up listening, I, I grew up listening to the Oak Ridge Boys, the Statler Brothers, the Gaither Vocal Band, and you know, the, the Gaither Gospel Hour. That's kind of what my parents watched and what my grandparents watched. So whenever we went to my me, mom and papa's house, we also had to, we always had to watch the Statler Brothers and we had to watch the Grand Old Opry and the Gaithers and and so I love that. I love singing with those guys. It's the things that I want to do that's on my bucket list is to actually sing in a gospel quartet. That would be amazing. Um, it's, it's more of a way for people who don't spend years learning how to read music for them to be able to do something like this. So what the shape notes are, are the note heads in the music are a shape. That's it. Each shape is a representation of a solfege syllable. Everybody knows solfege if you've watched Sound of Music. It's do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So if you can read the solfege because of the shape on the note, you could sing anything. This is Do. Do is a triangle. This is Re. Re is like a cup. Me, the diamond. Fa looks like a flag. It'll change positions depending on 
stem placement and if it's going up or down. So it's the one that everybody will recognize is just a regular round note. La is a rectangle. And T is like a baseball diamond or a cup or something. See if you can recognize them in here now. The scale will look like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do. And sing it just using the solfege. Mi, Fa, So, So, La, So, So, Mi, Do, Re, Di. Ah, better than that. Mi, Mi, Fa, So, So, La, So, So, Mi, Do, Re, Do, Do, La, So. Do, Re, Mi, 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 La, So, So, Mi, Re. It's another one. <coughs> mi so la so mi re do do la so do 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 mi re do mi re do re mi so la so mi re do do la so do mi mi do mi mi re do. And it's so genius the way that that works. And it's so handy. I really wish that they would implement this more in teaching music as a step to just reading the round notes. Because I know a lot of the people that I've talked to that have taken the fundamentals of music classes, music theory, like in the music, uh, the musicianship classes, which is sight reading melodic dictation, that sort of thing, it really helps to have this crutch because it helps you on your way. That's what it does. It's a tool. Just like all the symbols we use in music, they are tools to communicate to us what we need to sing, what we need to play, whatever. So I think it's handy. <laughs>